Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our webinar. I'm just going to allow a couple of minutes for all of our participants to get on board. I see that um, our numbers are climbing really quickly. So I'd say even a couple of seconds and we'll be able to get going. So today we have Jenny Cullen back with us today. Um, she did a lovely webinar last week. And today she's going to hone in on a, a specific aspect of what she was talking about last week. So she's going to give us a step-to-step -step guide to writing a press release. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Emer. And, and thank you very much for having me again. Um, really, really enjoyed last week's uh, webinar. And welcome to you all today on um, this beautiful, um, well, it is now sunny, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great, to, great to see the uh, rain, rain disappear. We don't need any rain. So um, thank you so, so much for, for attending today's um, webinar. I'm going to, as Emer um, mentioned, I'm going to do a, a deep dive into press releases. Um, and um, last week, I know I touched on press releases uh, as part of my webinar. But today, we're going to do a deep dive into press releases, how to write them, who they're to go to, um, why the journalists need them, and what to attach, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll, I'll get started. So what we're going to touch on today is what is a press release? Why do I need one? And what are journalists looking for? And um, who, who, sh who should receive your press release? What does it need to include? How to structure it? Where it needs to go? The media monitoring piece? And then what happens after that? I know I mentioned last week uh, the brands that we work with here at Revolve Marketing and PR. So it really just to give you any of you, uh, any of you today that haven't, haven't seen my previous presentation, the type of clients that we work with, um, pretty much all retail brands and in different sectors. So mentioning um, a, a number of them here, Thomas Sabo Jewelry, Wear and Sons, uh, Bio Oil under the um, lifestyle and beauty sector, Green Angel, also a beauty brand, then Russell Hobbs, um, Interiors, Lifestyle, Kettles and Toasters, Remington Hair Products, um, and mentioning as well Field Day uh, Candle brand and clothing brand New and Kashmir. So to mention a few, so to give you an idea that all of the retail brands that you work with or that you are uh, manufacturing all require press releases. So what is a press release? Um, it, it's basically um, a communicative tool to, to um, give journalists um, I suppose, a full picture of what your product, your company um, is about. It's, it's very much the foundation of, of all press communications. So the features, the benefits of your, of your product or your service, it's your compelling story. As I mentioned last week, it's all about that story. So it's very, very important. And as part of that actual document that goes over to the journalists, you, we will go, run through that now with you shortly, but it's making sure that you have the right images, that they're high res, um, that they're um, very, very, uh, I suppose, um, uh, clear and zoomed in on the actual product itself, but also to include very beautiful lifestyle shots. And um, all of this really, I suppose, opens up opportunities with the journalist to then come back to you. Um, they may come back and actually request a, an interview with you um, about your business, how it all started, and also to talk about the products as well. So, so you'd be quite surprised at the type of opportunities that do come back following the issue of a press release. Why do we need a press release? Um, and as, as we touched on before, um, it's very much the window of, of, your, of your, your brand along with your website and, and other social media platforms. But your press release, you must send those out. If you want to gain editorial uh, coverage in print media, magazines, um, consumer magazines, newspapers, online, um, the likes of um, Evoke or Her or RTE Lifestyle, you need to issue a press release. So it's very much as I'm mentioning here, the four pillars to position your brand in front of press, digital, radio, TV, to communicate your brand's ethics, message and new products. So even if you don't have a new product launch, still keep 
sending that message out, slightly tailor make the angle. Um, maybe talk about um, you know maybe uh, an award win, or um, you might maybe be announcing some new jobs or opening new stores. You have some sort of story to tell. Get that out. Uh, press are more likely to 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 publish um, a piece, whether it's um, a new product or service. But if you're giving them a press release and the details, they're more likely to publish that. Otherwise, they're not going to write about it. And as I mentioned before, um, when a release does go out, no harm in following up with the journalists and no harm in picking up the phone and ringing your, your, the local paper or if you're sending it out to national, also the same once you have that contact name. It's really it's important to do that. Um, target maximum number of journalists at one time in a format they know. And we'll run through that now a little bit later in, in the, um, so the layout of, of your press release and also how to actually attach it to the email and then also to make sure that you, um, you know, from a GDPR perspective, that you don't put all of the journalist names into the CC, which is the copy column. Um, so, so you need to make sure that, that, you know, you're meeting, you're adhering to all of those rules. Um, looking for column inch and share a voice, which is SOV. Select your audience. You're not going to send a press release, um, maybe about a ceramics, um, or, or jewelry brand to, uh, food journalists or to business journalists. So be very, very selective as to who you're sending that press release to make a list put the list into an Excel spreadsheet of who your contacts are and highlight those and pop those into your BCC. So be really, really selective as to who you're, you're sending that to. Um, delivery vehicle for everything about your brand. So you save that, you keep it in your folders and that when your release is ready to go out another time, you have that there, it's ready. Um, journalists are looking for newsworthy information. They want stories, they want maybe about a startup, um, as I mentioned before about a new product launch, but it doesn't always have to be that. It could be um, achievements, awards, milestones in your business. It's always important to have the hook or the angle, um, your USP, which is, which is important. And you only really get one chance to, when that release goes out, you only get one chance really to, to attract that journalist's attention. Um, and then, you know, it, it's, and then opportunities follow after that. Um, all information and imagery, make sure you have all of those in place before you even pull your release together. That's really important. As I mentioned last week, invest in good photography. There's really, really good photographers out there, both for lifestyle shots and cut out images. And I'll explain that a little bit later in the presentation. So that, that's key. Um, information relevance to their audience, be selective and targeted in your sector. As I mentioned, don't send a jewellery release to food journalists um, and, and vice versa. So be, be careful on that. Who should we send it to? Um, again, as I mentioned, make your list. Uh, keep that list um, in your Excel spreadsheet have it there because you're going to be busy with everything else. And then when you go back to, to maybe to announce some sort of, um, you know, maybe business story or you have a launch coming up, you, you want to have that ready. So maybe have someone in your office, pull together a list of all of your um, local press and also further afield, you go to national. So you can go to the independent Irish times, Sunday business post, and magazines that are at all national. Make a list, have that ready. Um, the Irish media landscape should be sent the release. So magazines, national, regional newspapers, digital online, um, the likes of uh, evoke.ie, her.ie, joe.ie, rte, etc, etc. Most of the publications have an online version. Um, also social media influencers and broadcast. So that's Important if you can gather some names of those people and pull them together in your Excel spreadsheet again, have those ready because there could be TV opportunities, radio as well. Radio is really strong here in Ireland. Um, and if you are targeting your local radio stations, there might be an opportunity there for you to be interviewed or one of your staff members depending on the story, and um, also maybe some sort of competition um, initiative. And usually you can work out a contra deal. You don't actually always have to pay 
for, for paid for content. They'd be really interested in interviewing you if the story is, is, is strong, if the angle is there, um, and maybe you can put up some sort of um, a competition as a giveaway. So, so that works really, really well. Uh, freelance journalists, um, lots of them. So that's important that you, you keep a list of, of them as well because they'd be very influential. Stylists, for any of you that are um, in, in the fashion um, sector, Stylists, I think I mentioned last week, there's a number of lots of good stylists around and a number of them that you can actually pay for to, uh, to, to, to include your brand in the likes of um, TV. So um, Ireland, Ireland AM. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Exposé now has gone, but, you know, there are opportunities for a number of, of TV slots there, usually with, with, with Ireland AM um, or the afternoon, uh, some of the afternoon shows, the Today Show with Moore and Dahi. So there are some opportunities there. So you usually have to go through it through a, a stylist. Yeah. Interior designers, chefs, nutritionists, radio and TV presenters. Now, we work with all of those here at the agency on behalf of our clients, but there's not, you know, nothing to say that you can't yourselves, depending on what sector you're in, actually make a list of various different, um, you know, uh, chefs and nutritionists that can add value and help you. So you can contact these people and then they can maybe present your or feature your brands. For example, we work with a number of chefs um, and Fiona Ayuma, she's got um, a brand called Fused. And she's also uh, working with um, the uh, afternoon show and um, six o'clock show. And she will cook. She's a chef. She will cook, and our our brand then sponsors her um, uh, kitchen aid. So so there's opportunities there, and you can pull together some contra deals. So there's quite a few few um, opportunities in all those different sectors. Database, as I mentioned last week. Um, and reiterating that's really important that you you can build your own. Now there's a lot of journalists there to contact in different in the different sectors, but if you're really sort of um, narrowing it down, and um, it, it, I think it's important just to make sure that you you focus on your own sector and you actually um, pull your own list together. If you are finding that you're not getting, I've had a few people contact me since last week's uh, webinar. Uh, they do have some. They have a great story to tell. They have fantastic products. Again, they're just not getting the editorial coverage. And I think what's what's important is to really get that message out far and wide. You you may have to purchase a database, as I mentioned before. There are agencies you can buy, or you can work with a with a PR agency. So, what should I include in my press release when I'm getting it, getting that ready to to go out to the journalists? Your product description is really important. Um, if it's um, if it's a clothing brand or if it's a ceramics brand or a jewelry brand, name the products. Make sure that each of the images, the lifestyle, and particularly the cutout images, are individually named. Whether you get your photographer to do that or you do that yourselves, and make sure that you actually put the pricing on the actual cutout image as well as your website. Because when the journalist goes to save that, when they receive it, they then will know down the road when they're going to include your product in their feature, who this is for because they receive so much information. So they'll file it away until they're ready to work on that particular piece. Um, if it is on uh, ceramics or, or, or a clothing brand or jewelry brand, they will then file it away for, for when they're ready, maybe later in the summer. So they work six to eight weeks ahead. So it's important that you name everything. Uh, you have all your logistics in place, um, making sure that you have your website, your e-commerce, so that if they do feature your brand in whatever publication, that as a customer, if I'm reading all about your brand, then I go to your website. If I'm really, really interested in the product, you've caught my attention, I want to go and purchase. You need to make sure that you have your e-commerce in, in place. That's important. So that means that I'm able to, to purchase off your website um, so I can add to cart, et cetera. So that all has to be in place. So get your web developer to work with you on that. Where your product is available, um, mention that on your release. We'll go through that now in a moment. Um, what stores it's available in, if it's available in stores. Um, and as I mentioned before, Emer and Mary and the Design Crafts Council of Ireland are there to support you. So pick up the phone, ring them. They're a wonderful support 
um, obviously working with, with um, you all and offering mentoring and workshops. Um, just moving forward in relation to the actual format of the press release, there's, I suppose, just sort of, you know, five areas that really, you know, the, the, the intro is really, really important really really important and you know it's it's key to have um to catch their attention at the very very get-go so they receive the release in their inbox and i'll go through that how it actually looks on on that um in a minute and um what's important is that you really just capture their attention straight away and um, the essentials why brand product is significant and um, why your brand your product you feel is, is significant and why would this journalist want to write about it put in a quote if you can and um, it gives the release uh, a, a little bit of life it also makes it very personable um, whether it's your, your md of the company whether it's um, whether you're a one-man band and you 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 are launching a, a product or you have a, a collection um, of of products that you you've worked on for many years, just maybe personalise it. Um, you know, put in a one-liner, uh, two lines, that's enough, um, and make sure that you have that in 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 quote unquote in the release. That's that's important, and the title of the person that's actually giving the quote. Um, and at the very very bottom, it always you always put ends at the very bottom of your release so they know it's over, it's finished, that's it. And the very very um, I suppose as a boilerplate, as an additional piece of information after ends is the editor's notes. And it's really important to include um, editor's notes in your release. Um, it can go over to two pages, it's not a problem. Usually you wouldn't go any, any more than two, two, two is sufficient. Um, if, if you are finding that you've got too much information that's going into three word pages, you will need to edit it down, it's important. Um, the um, editor's notes is important because what it does is it just is a short overview of, of the business, of your organization, of the products, and it just gives that journalist a quick go-to snapshot of what's above in the main, in the main release. Contact info, really important. Your phone number, your website, your email, really important. They know quickly who to contact. Um, some examples of releases that we write here, and then what I'll do is I'll just break it down into three sections, the top, the middle, and the end um, in, in a moment. So some examples of press releases that we, we would write. Um, I just thought I would mention a couple here that maybe would be, I would, would resonate with it with a few people and um, field day which is a candle brand and um, which is here on the left and also new in cashmere and um, just to give you an idea of the type of releases that we would write from a lifestyle perspective the heading their logo the image of if you have images as i mentioned not just attach them to the release but include them in the main body of the release which is really important and it's eye-catching label them underneath um under new one here you'll you'll see there's a mention um underneath each image which has got you know a, a mention of the throws and the cushions etc so that gives the journalists of a feel for what's included in the press release it will also be attached as well so don't worry so much about not you know that mentioning um a heading under each it's not mega important but if you can it'd be great um press release examples business slightly different um, I've just included here one from Green Angel. Um, I think I, I mentioned this last week where Mary runs a, a fantastic skincare uh, brand called Green Angel here in Dublin. And Mary won awards. And um, also we just felt that as, as, as well as sending out her product releases, we felt that there was an opportunity here to send out a release about her um, uh, her business, her win, her win. She won a uh, business uh, of the year for under 50 employees. So we press released that out. And once that went out, which also spoke about her product range, we had quite a lot of interest from journalists coming back to us, asking us, would we have um, further information? Would Mary be available for um, interviews, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to be ready for when the journalists come back 
um, after receiving your releases, they come back and ask you further questions. Regatta Outdoor Clothing, um, we, we basically, with, with this particular one, we uh, launched um, uh, the release, which was announcing 100 new jobs. Um, and they were rolling out X amount of stores throughout Ireland um, um, over the last, say, three years. So we, we worked a lot with them on their business releases. So we ran a, um, a few press launches, but as well, as well as sending out our product releases about their spring, summer and autumn winter collection, we, we issued out their business releases. Now, so this is the next few slides will be, I think, really, really just important to note. So how to structure a press release at the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, new in Kashmir, as, as, as it'll just give you an idea as to how the release is broken down um, into three sections. So at the very top of the release, you'll have the logo and then you will always mention press release um, and also the date. You can put the month or you can put the actual date. So 30th of April, 2020, you can actually put on the right hand side or sometimes we will write for immediate release. If we want to kind of leave it open, we don't necessarily want to just put the date, we just put for immediate release, that's also okay too. Um, so the brand logo is important, press release and date, write that at the top of your releases, catchy title if possible. Um, and aesthetic imagery, as I said, important to have those all in place before you even start writing your releases. Otherwise you will get no editorial coverage. Important to have that. So invest in that if you can. Um, and it's so, it's, it's so worth it. If any of you need um, names of, of photographers, um, maybe just contact Schemer or Mary and they can um, pass that information on, on to you. Um, captions under each image, as I mentioned to you, but also important to have your pricing ready. Have your price list saved as well, because journalists will, will, will ask you for that, but also they'll expect you to have the actual pricing on the individual images that you're attaching. The middle of the release, usually quite wordy. Um, this particular one was, was was, I suppose, more about this story. And as I mentioned before and last week, it's important to have a compelling story. In this case, it was about Quiva and her beautiful new and Kashmir brand. Quiva lives in Australia. Uh, it was all about the products, you know, 100% um, Kashmir styles. Um, how she's gone about to select her her cashmere, highest quality um, uh, cashmere, and also she has a homewares collection. So we speak about that a little bit as well. We talk about um, the collection itself, what it includes, throws and robes and cushions um, in a range of custom colours. Lovely. Um, also, maybe mentioning um, how long the business has been going. You know when you know when she set it up, um, what inspired her to set up the business. Um, you know, maybe awards that, that she has won um, and all really, I suppose, just about the, the styles, the colours, what's on trend, that's, that's important. So that she's very much on, on, on trend with what's happening on the, you know, the catwalk. So this was about the spring summer collection um, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we were communicating the main features of this collection to, to the journalists. So we did go into a little bit of detail on that. At the very end, as I mentioned before, notes to editor. Again, this is a little bit more wordy than a lot of our notes to editor. You can bullet point notes to editor. This one is more in paragraph chunks. Um, uh, because this was pro probably one of her first releases, we went into a little bit more background. She was born and raised in, in, in Dublin. Um, a little bit of story about Quiva herself, what inspired her to set up the business, um, you know, um, where she worked, um, you know, uh, her journey to date. So, so she was a, a, a painter and a, sculpt, a sculptor actually, and her passion for, for art and her eye for design. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's very much running in the family, but also it inspired her to, to set up the business. So that's really interesting to the journalists. And I think it's really important to include that. Um, so details about your collection, where the fabric is sourced, how it's created, and that could apply to anything, ceramics, jewelry, um, art, um, any, any sector really. So just put it all in there. Um, summary is optional. Um, at the very, very end of your um, press release, 
you, you can summarize it by what we've done here, which is the homeware collection for new one. And we've just bullet points, you'll see that there, we've bullet pointed it, which is quick, snappy, and you don't always have to include that. Um, you can finish off with the what I've outlined on the previous slide, but it's important to finish off with where your product is available and who to contact. So in this case, new and homeware collection is available online and there's her uh, website address and she's got her e-commerce ready so if people do go straight to new and cashmere they can purchase and then for further information press information they contact us so we have our details at the bottom you put yours um, save your press release in your folder as a word and also as a pdf so that when you're going to send your uh, press release out electronically on an email you'll have it there as a pdf and you can copy and paste it into the main body I'll explain that in a little bit more detail now shortly. Um, just in relation to the images, and I think I touched on that again, very important to invest in high res imagery, get your photographer to do that. There's a beautiful setting here of the throw and the cushions. That's a lifestyle image on the left hand side, and in the center is a cutout image. And your cutout images and your lifestyle have to be a minimum of 1 MB, which are also termed as 300 DPI dots per inch. Most photographers will know that, so there's really no need to worry. Um, just make sure that you have high res and they, they, they will produce those for you if you ask that. Um, you, I think it's important just to save all of those. You can be selective as to which images you want to send. Um, as I mentioned before, you, you can put those attached. If there's a number of them, you need to use a link. And that's, that's what this slide is about here. So how to issue release to the media. So as I mentioned, all images need to be captioned, product description. So um, it could be um, um, gold um, earrings, um, spring, summer, and then your spring, summer 20, and then your website and then the pricing, that's enough. It really just have a short description. Very important to have your, your, your website, which is obviously a go-to for, for the consumer, but it's also where the journalists will know later on down the road. I will include this particular brand and she'll know straight away, or they'll know straight away who it's for, what brand. So save those in your folder. Um, example again, new in Kashmir, large cable throw in light gray, there's the pricing, it's also in sterling, and then her website. Images are usually too large to attach in an email unless you're just putting one or two. So do pop them into a WeTransfer or a Dropbox. So WeTransfer is free, but the link does expire after one week. Um, you can pay a um, subscription for, for this. And, and you know that's something that if you're going to be using regularly, you, you can do that. Um, Drop, Dropbox is free um, and the link does not expire as long as the files are on your Dropbox. So, you can, you can actually, um, uh, you know, this is something that you can pay for if you want to get unlimited storage. But, you know, I think if you, if you're not going to be sending that out to too too many um, press releases, we would find that WeTransfer link is is probably the, the best one to use. Um, so so, uh, and as I said, like it does expire after seven days, but usually the journalist will will download them fairly quickly and save them into his or her folders ready for. Um, the feature. So just on the press releases um, in relation to uh, attaching those, when you have your release ready, as I said to you before, convert it into a PDF. So when you're actually sending that out in your email, so you have your email ready there and we've just highlighted, um, enlarged up the actual two CC and BCC column and you can see that we've circled the BCC. It's important that you actually put all of your database, your email addresses that you've saved in your Excel spreadsheet and you highlight them with your cursor and you copy and paste them into your BCC, that's really important. Um, well, first of all, no one really wants to see who else is receiving um, the release, but also from a GDPR perspective, it's important that you meet those uh, GDPR requirements, otherwise you will be fined um, data privacy. So it's, it's, it's really important that you just pop those into your to BCC. Now, by having the names um, and the email addresses in the first place on your, on your own database, um, if you have sourced those um, and they have um, 
permitted you to use their details, either they've given those details to you over the phone from the publication if you've run the newspaper, or if you've taken them from a magazine or newspaper that you've purchased or in the store um, or whatever, you are, um, yes, you, that is fine for you to use that um, data that has already been, um, it's out there in the public domain, you can actually use that data. So there's no, there's no problem there from a GDPR perspective, you're fine. Um, just then in your subject bar, it's important to put the word press release and then just highlight it, Lux Living with New and Kashmir or whatever the title is, um, you know, uh, spring, summer uh, ceramics or whatever your, your heading is. Just do just put it in briefly into the subject bar, but press release should be first. Then your um, press release, which was converted into Word, um, which is in Word, and then you converted it into a uh, into a PDF. You can copy and paste that into the main body of your email, but also you can include your link, which you'll see there is the link, uh, your WeTransfer link. That is where the journalist will click to and will download all of the image. So that's important that you put that there, but also you can attach your Word document to the press release. So it's there ready for the journalist to click on the Word doc and can use that copy then straight away. So attach a Word doc, copy and paste your PDF into the main body of the email and put your link. Step two, so what, as I said to you there, it attaches an example of your Word doc, um, which is there attached, as you can see. Um, that is the same as what you're actually including in the main body as well. Okay, so it's just there, as I said to you, it's just attached. Um, and they can save it. Then the link is there as well with your images and your price list if you want. So everything is there in your link. You can also put your press release into the link as well, actually. Um, it, having an image in the main body of the email is, is good because what it does is it captures, and captures their attention straight away. So that's really, really good point and easy to do. So just copy and paste that in. So just a small tip there that we thought we'd mention. Um, a lot of people ask about timings and um, the best time. So the best time to issue a press release is... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings, nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, really, that is the best time. Not to say you can't issue it outside of those times, you can, um, but they are the best times. So at the very bottom, notes to editor, um, as, I, as I mentioned to you before, that's important that you do put in your notes to editor. It's a quick snapshot summary there. Um, it gives you, you know, um, a, 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 a short overview of, of the business and the organization. So it's, it's, it's important to put that there. Um, you also should just make sure you're, you're, as I mentioned to your contact details. So it's really important that you put your contact details there so they know who to, to, to speak to. Maybe the email is going out from, um, for example, I'm sending it out jenny at revolve.ie, but then sometimes if they reply back to me, yes, I'll see it, but they may phone and they may look for me or if someone else has sent it out, they, 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 um, they may not get hold of me. So just make sure that if you are sending it out and if you have the contact details at the very bottom of the email that you also put your full team's contact details on it or a generic, just a main number of the office that they can phone. Um, so the information that's useful at the, at, in the notes to editor, but it doesn't always need to include the full story. So it's just maybe just bullet points at the very, very bottom. So your email, phone number of the relevant person, as I mentioned, overview of the business, snapshot of, that, of, of the business, very just top line um, or your organization um, or what the press release is about. So um, as I mentioned before, it could be a your spring summer collection launch or it could be a new store opening or a new person has joined the company whatever it is um what did, what additional assets are available i.e photographs video and interviews so if you have additional um uh, pieces of information of assets you know no harm in putting those in and maybe mentioning at the bottom that you know interviews um uh, we are be interested in interviews um and um were available for interviews should these arise. So that's quite good to put down as well. Also, uh, video, if you video content, may mention that as well because it could be quite um, useful for maybe an online feature um, about your business. 
uh, awards, if you've won any awards recently, put those into the press release as well. And then any recent partnerships. Um, we just mentioned one here, which was our KitchenAid as our client. And um, they were 100 years and they have the Queen of Hearts collection. So we just mentioned that into in a release. Um, and we kept it, it resonated throughout a number of our releases because they were celebrating 100 years. So if you are celebrating a milestone, put it in. Um, just an example here of uh, further releases and cutouts. This we thought would be really interesting. Um, it's um, Weir and Sons, our client, and an Astrid and Neo, which is a collection um, under the umbrella of Weir's. This is a press release we pulled together where we were announcing the Astrid and Neo rainbow collection at Weir and Sons. So you'll see on the left hand side here is the heading, press release for immediate release, Weir's logo, three nice images. Those images would not be high res in that particular document. They would always be high res, but attached. Um, a little bit of copy about the, 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 the brand, um, uh, you know, the, the, the classic Astrid and Mio styles and the new rainbow collection, just a little bit of features and benefits about the collection. Um, and in this case, we included a number of the cutout images in the press release, as you can see here. And what we did was we highlighted what each one was at the very bottom with the retail price and then ends. And you'll see there um, the Astrid Mio collection exclusively in Ireland in store now at Weir and Sons Grafton Street or online. So we mentioned that there and then our details at the bottom. In the middle here, you'll see a cutout image, image here of an ear cuff, which is included in the release, but it just we've highlighted it there so you can see that is a cutout image and that would be high res 300 DPI or 1 MB, no lower than 1 MB. The journalists can use that and they can make it as big as they want because it's high res enough. So the better the image, the more opportunity for you to get really good product placement, editorial, column inch on a page. Um, then also you'll see that we've highlighted where the ear cuff actually sits on the ear, which is also included in the release. And over on the right hand side there, you'll see where that particular ear cuff then was featured in the magazine. So I think this possibly is social and personal weddings. So it was featured on a very beautiful page uh, with gorgeous images of brides and bridesmaids and shoes and, and a dress. So really just, it's, it's just so fitting. And the better the images are, the better opportunities you have to have those um, included in some beautiful pages. Once you're sending your release out to the journalists in those particular magazines. Um, media monitoring. Um, so for those of you today who are watching, I mentioned media monitoring last week. It is important to invest in media monitoring. It isn't, it's inexpensive um, and, and, and it's, it's definitely well worth the investment, maybe a, a couple of hundred euros a month. Um, again, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fee, a reading fee, which I think is about 150 euro, but you then pay per clip. So for example, in the Irish Independent here, um, uh, a watch was featured for, for again, Weir and Sons. That is an actual clip. So that one page is a clip. So you would pay for that. I think it's in the region of about a hundred, sorry, one, one euro fifty for one clip. So anytime your brand is featured, you will pay for that clip wherever it lands. Um, you, you don't know where the story will land or the, the product will land. Um, as I mentioned there, the fee, you pay a monthly reading fee for the media monitoring agency to read in every publication and online as well. They'll pick those up and you'll get the alerts sent through to you on a daily basis if there is coverage. You give them a choice of keywords. So um, it could be, in this case, Wear and Sons or, or whatever your, your brand is. You give them that keyword. You can give them a number of keywords, actually. Um, and uh, where you feel that you, um, you want that picked up. Now, there was a sort of a standard reading fee for Ireland. So, so the reach will be right across the board in, in all publications. Um, and then advertising value equivalent, which is your AVE. So it's important to actually see what type of advertising value equivalent you're getting. Um, when your clip does come in, you'll be able to go into the portal and you'll be able to, the media monitoring company, they can tell you how much, of your, how much AVE you've actually achieved in that given month. So that's all there for you. And you'll get your clips sent in on a PDF. 
here's some more um, editorial coverage achieved. And again, just to give you an idea as to the type of really beautiful pieces that you can actually um, um, be part of um, editorial coverage, like here in, in the Glass magazine, there's a number of watches and one of them was for, for Wear and Sons, our client, and you'll see where it's highlighted in yellow, that is the keyword. In the middle, Remington, which is the um, uh, grooming brand, um, uh, male and female um, grooming brand, and the hair dryer was featured in the Athlone advertiser. So it's important you, you, you'll, again, making sure that you actually have, if you are going to be sending out something far and wide, that you have all of the contact details for all of the publications, or if you're just working with your own region, um, so for example, if you just want to send out locally to your local papers, um, then it's important that you obviously have the right contact details as to who you're sending them to, so you want to make sure that they're covered, uh, that they cover your products. Um, Irish Examiner, Green Angel, and again, Triton Showers. So it gives you an idea as to the really, really beautiful pieces that can be actually achieved. I do think it's important as well, if you're sending your release out, no harm in picking up the phone, I think as I mentioned, and speaking to the journalist you know, if there's anything else that they might need. Um, more editorial coverage here, as you'll see, uh, Field Day Candle Brand, Irish Candle Brand, uh, featured a most beautiful interiors page with other brands like um, uh, some tables and chairs, very, very, very beautiful, very, very um, uh, bespoke pieces there. So again, that's something that, you know, that small piece there for field day, the ABE will be given for that particular piece of column inch on the top there, and then the full page value as well. So you can see how much you're getting. Um, in the center there, we've got KitchenAid down the very, very bottom, which is, which is again, the choice by the journalists themselves to include that. So the editorial value is normally three times the advertising value because the journalist has actually selected that particular product you haven't sent it in and paid for it, they're selecting, it's their choice to include it. Moving forward then, just on business coverage, I mentioned this before, but I thought it was important to reiterate this as, a, as well. If you do have a business story, you are sending out um, so a, key, a key message about your business that you've you know, achieved some achievement, um, your new launches, you're increasing the uh, number of your staff, um, whatever that message is, there are lots of opportunities. And again, with these two examples here, uh, B2B and profile coverage, we sent those out, business release um, out, and on the back of that, we got an interview for McGee Clothing for Rosie in Irish Country Magazine. We got a DPS, which is a double page spread, and then the Sunday Business Post um, as well got a full page in, in, in that. So, these are just a small, a very, very small uh, sample. We have a number of, of um, business pieces that we've, we've achieved. And again, it's something that you can do. You just need to make sure that you have that story. As I said, it's the compelling story. Just send that out and be there ready for them to come back and talk to you further or have a, a, an interview opportunity with you over the phone is, is, is very possible, but, but it's important to, to get that message out. Couple more examples there. New in Kashmir, the Glass magazine covered um, uh, Quiva and her brand, a bit of a day in the life of, just her journey, what inspired her to set up the business, about her family. So it was really a lovely piece, my glossy weekend. Um, then in the center, Camille Tai, one of our other clients, um, we had a, a business story there with um, Irish Daily Star, and we were running. Um, uh, new recipes um, we shared those out um, across the board and with various different key celebrities so we've made we've made Madden um, has signature um, uh, recipe we also had Lorraine Keane um, a few other a few other um, well-known um, celebrities so what we did was we had them all write their own recipe for Camille Thai and we shared those across uh, food and um, food and drink journalists and on the right hand side there, Irish Country Magazine with Weir and Sons. I think I mentioned these last week, but for those of you who weren't watching last week, all of these are on the back of um, press releases that we send out about the actual person behind the brand or a person behind within a family business. And a lot of family businesses out there 
do talk about who's part of the family and the business and what they do, whether it's production, whether it's sales, whether it's on the, the, the business side, you know, shout out about, you know, the achievements that you, that you, um, that you've, you've, you've got within the, the organization. Um, release is also picked up by stylists and researchers. Um, I think I mentioned that before, but that's also really important to just keep the, you have a lot of um, stylists and it's important that you keep communicating with stylists and um, uh, TV researchers if, if possible. And also radio. Radio is really, really strong, as I mentioned before. So, so do, do keep a database there or pick up the phone and ring your local radio station. So there's lots of opportunities there. Um, social press releases, um, if you are running an event um, or if you, at the moment, obviously all events are obviously on hold and um, that's just not happening. And it probably a lot of our clients' events um, have been um, moved and rescheduled to the end of the year, but we just have to wait and see what happens there. But at best times when there is a social event, whether it's a store opening, whether it's a Thomas Sabo spring summer collection launch, which we had in a restaurant in Dublin, and we invited the journalists along. Um, again, we will still have to write a press release. We will still send that press release out, but we also write a social release. And with that social release, again, it's about the product. It could be about your um, clothing brand or your ceramics brand, um, or you're an artist and you're launching a new uh, collection. You know, still write a press release and maybe who was there at the event, um, who, who attended, um, who, who was the entertainment, whether there was music, um, what drinks and, and food was served, you know, who were the guests there, you know, mention all of those, quote, a quote as well is always good. And again, you'd need a photographer. So the photographer will help you with those and will help you select the right images to send out to the, to the journalist. That's important. Um, you will receive a copy of this presentation. Um, afterwards, um, so I'm going to move on, but if there's any, any questions following on from this, um, please do contact me or to contact Mary or, or Emer. There's quite a lot of content here, so, um, but it's, it's, it's fairly clear, but any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Social coverage on the back of the press release is there, as I mentioned, the photographer will be able to select which ones are the best, and off they go out to press. And this is the type of coverage that you'll see after um, an event. Really, really um, valuable and very added value to, to your brand. So I'll leave it at that, um, ladies and gentlemen, today. I just thought um, something a little bit different. And I always like to listen to TED Talks and Seth Godin and um, uh, Simon Senek, I think he's great, the story of why. Um, today I was listening to Jerry Silfer, he's um, digital and PR advisor at the Spin Factory. Um, there's no shortage of edit editorial space anymore, but there is a shortage of mental space. We want people to trust to fall in love with your brand. You can get the editorial, but you want to make sure that the journalist really believes in, in your product. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Jenny, that was very informative. <laughs> We're really generous with your information. And as everyone will have heard, Jenny is happy to send on her presentation afterwards. Now, silly me, I omitted to remind you all about uh, the Q&A and the chat box. If anyone has any questions, please uh, get going on those. And as per the last time that Jenny was here, she was willing to take questions um, afterwards if people would like to um, email her. Okay, I have one here. Um, what about, somebody's just wondering about press releases for publications which work, say, two months in advance. How would you best manage those? Yeah, the, um, most of the journalists will work, their lead times are usually about six to eight weeks in advance um, for editorial. So you can pick up the phone and you can ring any publication and get an ad in pretty much today, tomorrow, because you're, you're attaching a, a revenue spend with that. But with a press release, yes, you, you need to send that out. So if you send something out today for long leads, and what I mean by, what I mean by long leads is for, for publications that are on the shelf in the newsstands that are monthlies, for example, Irish Country Magazine, Image Magazine, uh, Social Personal, um, those are monthly magazines and they will usually 
ask for about six to eight weeks lead time for editorial. So if your release goes out today, we're the end of April, um, they are already working on the um, June issues which um, and editorial for July issues. So if a July issue is being worked on at the moment, it will be on the newsstand in the middle of June. So you need to be bearing in mind that you always really need to be working six to eight weeks in advance. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for that. It's very, very useful. I have another question here. Um, should we send out different stroke varied press releases to each outlet? Um, sorry, I'm not really... I'd say what, what she means or he means by that is should we send out a different or varied uh, release? I would say to each publication is, is probably... What yeah, okay. No, I mean... Uh, you. You, you can actually send your, your, again, depending on what your message is. So um, I'm not sure what sector this person is in, but if you're in uh, the jewellery sector, you have a jewellery collection and you're, say, developing a new collection for the summer, you can send that out far and wide. It can go to everybody as long as you put them into the BCC. But then if you have another... Um, uh, collect, another product that you want to maybe release again in a few weeks' time, you can also send that out to all of those people again. Um, the only time you'd really be selective is if you've got, say, a business, um, if you've got a specific business message going out, you'd really send that into the likes of your um, the news desks. Um, yeah, I, I suppose really it just depends on what, what the message is. It's a hard one to answer until, unless I know, but usually you can send it out far and wide uh, normally you can, but making sure you have them all in the BCC column. Okay, this person is just coming with you, their, their gallery and mixed media, that's, that's their work. Gallery and mixed media, okay, yeah. So, so yeah, you, you, can, you can, I mean, absolutely no harm. What we do a lot of the time is send the release out. Um, so if it is, um, for example, if we're sending out a release about KitchenAid mixers, that will go in the BCC column, but it'll go to all of the interior and lifestyle publications. We'll select it to go to just those recipients as opposed to, it won't go to obviously fashion, it won't go to beauty and it won't go to business. Does that make sense? It does, it does. It makes, it makes sense to me anyway. I hope okay. it makes, yeah. makes sense to our audience there. Okay, I hope. <laughs> if, if, if there's anything in particular, please just, you know, no problem, email me on, on any particular query. There's no problem. That's great. That's very nice of you, Jenny. Thank you. No problem. Um, I have one here, re media monitoring. Is it an annual fee or can you ask for media monitoring to be done for a two-month period? I think we touched on this last week. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're an annual festival, so it, it wouldn't be generally relevant. So Sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's really better. good question. And that's no problem at all. You can switch it on and off whenever. So you could have it on for a month and then switch it off. What I would advise you to do is, so if you're running an annual event, and just say that's in October, um, the event say is taking place on the 20th of October, for argument's sake, you, you would switch on your media monitoring just as your release goes out, say the week before or two weeks before, um, to pick up your editorial coverage, and then literally switch it off about three weeks later because you will have captured pretty much all of the relevant content around that particular event and you wouldn't need it on and you can switch it on and off with the with the media monitoring company yes okay thank you jenny i'm going to preface this one by saying that uh, in my workings with crafts craft and design people uh, they actually don't realize how good each of their intrinsic story is yeah and, but this question is, what would be the key points to a compelling story? Compelling story. Okay, yeah. Um, so, there's a, yeah, this, this is a number of points here. Um, what, is your, what is your key achievement, really? I think if you list down what those key achievements are, um, to your, for example, if you're, um, if you're, you've set up a business maybe recently, um, you know, and, and, and you've achieved a high volume of sales. It really just depends on, on what the business is, is about and how the business is performing. And maybe it's a business that has, um, 
managed to navigate through really difficult times like the previous recession and then obviously now um that could also be a press release about how you've actually managed to um to get through that difficult time um again it really really just depends on what is what is your business about um i suppose another idea would be where we were talking to a company the other day who are a drinks brand and they are launching a completely new range of of drinks um and again that's a very compelling story there to tell but also the history of the company the company is around uh, 20 years and um, it was to make sure that they included the history who's involved and there's a husband and wife team and um, they're they're on a farm there's a really interesting story there whereas a lot of people don't realize actually that's important piece to to the whole kind of journey so I think making a list of, of what your achievements are, where you've come from and where you are today and where you're going, put it all down um, because it, it, it pulls the whole storyline together. Great. I'm getting an awful lot, lot of, of thank yous and uh, praise, so I'm conveying that to you. So thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you. And I have one here. Um, should, should we have different files for online and press? Different files, is it? Yeah, files, F-I-L-E-S. For online and press. Um, do they mean, sorry? Do they... Probably means, I'd say she, she or he means print. It's a she actually, she, that she means print media as opposed to online social media. Okay, so files as in the, um, sorry, the email address, the contact details on their database, is so it? Here we've got it here, she's, she's clarified it for me that that's correct, hold on. Uh, different files for online and press, e.g. Uh, JPEGs uh, to all, or do we use other files or images? Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so what they need to do is they need to save, again, depending on what business they're in. So, so if they have images of uh, ceramics and the individual um, pieces are, are taken by a photographer and they're high resolution um, and JPEG is fine. Um, they would save those individual JPEGs and they have to be 300 DPI or no lower than one MB in size. And the photographer would know that. So each of those files will need to be saved. Um, and yes, that all of those then would be put into a link for the journalist. So once the journalist has a JPEG and that's high res JPEG, um, it, it's sufficient. Okay, thank you. I've got another one here. Um, when work by designers is featured in publications such as the Irish Arts Review, um, how many words uh, should this be? Should the same criteria apply to such a specialist magazine as it does to a press release? So if you're putting something towards the Irish Arts Review, should it be of a similar um, density of content as uh, the print media? Yeah, I, I would. Um, I would. So I, I, I suspect that what they're asking is the release that goes out. Would that be the same content in that release? In other words, would you would you wish that the arts or Irish Arts Review as well as say sending it to the consumer publications? Um, yeah, like what, what they're saying is, 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 does the same criteria apply? Mm, I mean, it does. Exactly the same, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they, they would want to receive, if I'm understanding the correct the question correctly, they would want to receive the content the same as the journalists would in the likes of, uh, whether it be an online publication like evoke.ie or could be for the Irish Times weekend supplement. They'd all want to receive the same content, the same format, the same press release can, can work for all of them. Okay. I have one here. Are there any suggestions for lifestyle shots on a limited budget, budget? And how do you maximize existing shots? Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to, very difficult for me to answer the question on the existing shots. I'd have to see them. Right. And, and, and if they want to send them to us and we can have a look at them, that's no problem. That because would be lovely. That's really generous. Well, that's no problem. I mean, that's yeah. easy. But um, I think it's um, the, the existing shots that they have may suffice. Um, if they're not, 
um, press friendly, as we call them. Um, they're not, they don't meet the requirements of being high res enough or um, the, the clarity of the photograph isn't, isn't, isn't um, really as per, as per what they need. Um, then they would need to invest in photographer. And again, that's a difficult one to answer because the photographers normally charge for their time. So it really just depends on how the business is ready and set up, how many images need to be taken. So I suppose a photographer can cost anything from 700 euros up to three and a half thousand. So it just depends on how much time and what's involved um, and where the photographer, um, usually you'd use a local photographer, it'd probably be the best um, uh, if you have a relationship with a, with a, with a um, photographer locally, that's probably the best to use rather than having someone to travel from a different area. But um, those images that they have at the moment may, may be fine. Okay, so you're, you're happy enough to do that, are you? Yeah, that's fine. Look at them. Thank you so much. Okay, um, this is a general question. Um, how many press releases should a small business aim to send out in a year? Or is there, is there a kind of a guide on that? No. None. No guide. You can, I, I, one thing I would suggest is though that you don't send the same press release out twice three times, four times, some people have done that. And um, the journalists, like we have had to, for example, if you don't have, and we've had this situation in the past where some of our clients are based internationally and we're their Irish hub here. And we find that they may launch a range of, for example, um, a shower brand. They may launch a range of showers in, the, in Europe or the UK, but they're not launching all of those here. So we have to keep the communication going. So some of the brands that are watching today may not have enough imagery to send out lots of press releases. And I can totally understand that. So what you need to do is you need to um, just be careful because the journalist will recognize the same image coming a couple of times if you're to send that release out more than six times in a year. And if they see the same image, even though you've changed up the angle, the tone and the approach of the release, they'll still maybe not featured because the images aren't changed. So it's a tricky one to, to try and, um, I suppose, navigate that release through and get editorial using the same images. So it is important to get, when you have a photographer, you have a good photographer on board, get as many images as you possibly can because you can use those images across the whole year and select, or you get spring, summer collection and autumn, winter collection images um, done so that you can then tailor make your your releases around those two sort of key pillar launches in the year but it, it you can send out as many to answer your question you can send out as many releases as you would like okay we have a quick one here and this theme came up last week as well um is there a company you'd recommend for media monitoring i hope these guys are going to give us um <laughs> a discount because i i giving them um <laughs> All the all the all the kudos here. That's yeah. Anyway, so so there is a number of them. Um, there's a, a very a big company called um, uh, Gorkana. Um, they're a big big agency. Um, we've used them in the past. We work with clients you see in the UK. So we would switch on with Gorkana, um, and they have a number of sort of um, sub subsidiaries then um, uh, as part of their organisation. We would use at the moment we use a company called true hawk and i think i'll have to ring them after this and get a get a good better deal from them um so true hawk are very good um and Cantar media as well as another one um media hq i think i mentioned last week um but true hawk are the ones that we work with and we find them super we've done a, quite a bit of research um so i'm definitely going to make a phone call to him this afternoon <laughs> Well, definitely, you would have done quite a lot of research, and, and thank you for being generous with those recommendations. No problem. I have, I have, I have one here. Uh, this person feels like in many publications, if they see a nice editorial piece, they've noticed that a paid half page or full page ad appears a little bit later. Are you going to struggle if you're not willing to pay for the advertisements also? Yeah, that's a really, that's really interesting, a good insight there. Yeah, so, so I'm glad that um, the, this, this, this question came up. Um, and 
it's interesting and it just shows you that well our job at times can be extremely challenging because some of our clients don't advertise at all um and there's been quite a few of them over the last we're 16 years in business this year and, and and it has been really challenging sometimes to get editorial when you don't you can't get it on the back of an ad a paid for ad so your listener today um really interesting because some clients yes will uh, schedule in ads for example um we would work with um we, we manage an advertising budget for a number of our clients and we media buy so we may ring up uh house and home or image interiors and living and book in four six ten ads um or it could be a jewelry brand we, we'd book in ads for the year on the back of those ads the journalists will give you editorial so your, your viewer is right. When you're flicking through the magazine, you'll see an ad, maybe half page or full page, and somewhere else, maybe in the, uh, whether it's a, a, dress, a clothing brand or jewelry or whatever, you'll see a piece of editorial about that particular brand in a feature on the editorial pages. Because in any publication, the advertising team will sit in one part of the office and the editorial team sit in the other, but they all meet and say, such and such a brand is spending um whatever it is on on ad revenue this month we need to give them editorial on the back of that ad so it's kind of like a a gift with purchase on the back of your ad spend if that makes sense so the more your clients advertise yes you're going to get editorial and it's important that we know as an agency that the brands are advertising because some of our clients don't go through us for advertising they go through big media agencies if they're spending money on tv or bigger spend um, high volume spend it's important we know so that we can negotiate but then a lot of our clients and a lot of people don't have the uh, resources to to allocate a budget in the year for ad spend um, but this is how magazines and online publications that's how they make a living that's everyone has to has to charge some way so we are in a job where we will negotiate for our clients um, just this morning, I had a call with a publication and we're negotiating a full page and we're trying to get a really uh, rock down rate uh, for, for, um, for that client. Um, so whilst the publication need the revenue, we want to try and get the ad in for a, for a really good negotiated rate. Um, but then at the same time, we want to get the editorial. And then we have our general clients that don't advertise and we will send out press releases a lot of the time for them, but there's no, there's, they, they, a lot of them just never advertise. So it makes it a little bit harder to get into that publication because a lot of the time the magazines will treat quite a few of the um, ad spenders um, with priority and give them editorial on the back of their, on their, uh, of their ads because they're spending money. So it's, it's, um, it's a bit of a minefield, but your your viewer is right that there um there usually would be an ad and editorial on the back of it but you can still it's not to say that you can't get editorial if you're not spending money on advertising you can because we do it every day of the week okay is there any ideal number or whereabouts that how many words should be in a press release no um, I think I mentioned earlier, um, if you keep, and I don't know if I mentioned today about the, the, the size of the font um, and the, the type font, but I think I mentioned it last week, it doesn't have to be New Times Roman, it can be Arial, it can be Verdana, whatever. Um, your font, if you keep your font no lower than, um, don't go lower than 10 uh, pitch um, size, 12 would be great, but if you find it's going over onto two pages, that's fine, but just don't go any any um, further than two pages. So it wouldn't be necessarily down to the number of words. It would be more so the the pitch of the um, the size of the font and then just two pages as max. Okay, thank you. Um, this person, uh, we're doing the photography ourselves and we're quite, quite good at the quality. Yeah. Can you tell us more about how to do um, online shots um a lot of the and again i haven't seen the photographs but i would question whether the photography um i've seen some of the images that we we've been sent by various clients over the years 
and they've done it themselves and the quality just isn't there and it just doesn't meet the specification outlined by the, the magazines and also online. So as I said to you before, 300 DPI, no lower than 1 MB for both cutouts and lifestyle shots. The higher resolution, the better. Um, and the both online and print will require the same size. I, I hope I haven't mislaid you there. It's out, outline, outline shots. Yeah, you got that, did you? Yeah. Outline shots, um, lifestyle, is it? I'm just waiting. To, I, I think I may have um, mis misled okay. you there. Um, she's, she's got them more of a good quality, and then she wants to know about how to do, to do outline shots. I'm not sure what she means by outline shots, but it could be... Um, oh, yes, yes, cutout shots. Cut cutouts, out. yeah, okay. So that's cutouts are really important because um, majority of the time, as, as you've seen in the presentation and the samples I've showed you of the various editorial pages, whether it be social or personal weddings or the glass or um, the various uh, magazine um, examples I've given you in the presentation, um, the majority of the releases that we send out would have cutouts uh, attached or in the link and those cutouts have to be as i said to you i keep repeating has to be high res so no smaller than 300 dots per inch and no smaller than 1 mb per cutout so that when the journalist receives it it, it can be increased to any size that they want to increase it to that's a, a perfect answer, and I'm sorry if I mis misled okay. anyone there. Um, in your experience, uh, does the investment in ads stroke PR result in increased revenue? That's a difficult one. So I think what they're saying is that, and, and this, uh, if, I'm, if I'm hearing this question right, that the editorial coverage that appears in various publications, does that um, equal to increased revenue spend at their end? Um, I think it is, does it increase revenue bottom line? Does somebody want to help yeah. you? Yeah, I think that's what it's... That, um, I think that's what they mean. Like, does the business make more money? Yeah. Um, and, 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 and that's something that comes up a lot of the time. So, for example, um, yes and no. We've had, over the years, we've had a number of clients that we... Our job is to... At the end of the day, our job is to get that brand out there. We land the brand and that's what we have to do when we're sending out a press release we want to make sure that we get the editorial coverage out there in the public domain whether it be in magazines newspapers radio tv whatever the case may be after that it's 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 not it's not up to us as an agency to um uh, increase their um customer spend in other words if they have new customers that come to their store or go online to purchase um, or whatever it is. So for example, if it's a, a clothing collection and there's a shoot, a beautiful shoot in um, front cover shoot in social personal magazine and there's jackets and, and, and trousers or, um, or it could be a jewelry brand, anything at all. If the editorial coverage is out there and there's a lot of editorial coverage and we've achieved so much editorial content over the years for certain brands per month, sometimes we get feedback and it's always really interesting as a business owner for me to have feedback from um, particularly Irish brands because I want to see how those brands actually are performing from a revenue perspective. If they've had a number of editorial clips and then I speak to the owners of the companies and I find out how did that collection do? How did your spring summer collection perform? Were there increased sales to your website? Were there increased sales into your stores? We like to have that feedback just so we can see, you know, how that editorial actually, um, how, it, how it worked in terms of ROI, return on investment. Um, sometimes it does actually uh, work, but again, it's very hard to measure. Um, it's just not tangible. It's difficult unless you have a specific call to action. So if you have a store or if you have um, a particular offering, so for example, if it's Green Angel Skincare um, and they have um, for every, um, I don't know, a gift with purchase and they, you know, if someone purchases X amount of products and they have a candle, I'm not saying that they do this, but as an example, they're able to directly measure how many customers came to their website to purchase those items 
and they receive their free candle, they're able to measure that. But in general, editorial, it goes to create awareness, but it doesn't always equal sales straight away. What it does is it reinforces that brand's message right across the board. And, and whoever, whoever asked this question is a really good one. Um, I think it's important for them to note that you might not see an, an increased peak straight away in sales um, if there's no call to action. If it's a gen general story about your brand, the history of your brand, a brand or your collection, you may see an increase, but you may not see a dramatic increase, but in time you will. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one. Okay. But if you're not out there at all, you're never going to be, um, I suppose, recognizable to, to people. Can I give you um, one kind of final one as we wrap up? Um, if we were taking um, a gift, gift, gift and homeware business, say turning over 80,000 per annum, would you have a, a, a rule of thumb that they should consider spending? on PR or is that putting you on the spot? No, it's not putting me on the spot. Um, it, 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 I've never really been asked that question before. Um, I think, again, it's, it's something that's probably more um, personal to, to, to the brand. Um, it doesn't necessarily go by their, I suppose, their turnover. It, it really just depends on who they are, what they're about, what sector they're in, um, what their key objectives are. When clients ring us and ask us, you know, sometimes I, I receive phone calls um, and it could be a brand that is starting out. It could be a brand that is very established. They have a really interesting story there. They're, they're around a long time and maybe there's some new, um, in, a new injection of, 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 of business owners or whatever it is. It just really depends on the, on the company um, and what they have to offer. But I think no matter what size you are and how much turnover you're achieving, I think it's always important to, to, to do PR. I mean, for example, the last three weeks, four weeks, we've all been struggling to, to look at our businesses and try and navigate through this surreal time we're all living in and even we're doing our own PR uh, by me doing this today helps but also you know uh, I think that you know if you're a small business with a turnover of 100 grand or if your business is a turnover of 500 grand I think it's irrelevant I think you should be doing PR at PR and it's inexpensive it's really not that expensive and if you're to do it yourself and you can pull together that list of contacts it's something that's very um it's very achievable um, from a financial perspective and the value added, I think, is, is so much worth it. Jenny, that's absolutely super. You've been, as I said earlier, so generous with your information and answering all the questions no and leaving it that, that people can email you afterwards. Um, you were very generous of your time over the last uh, two weeks. And on behalf of... Um, Mary Dunn, myself, the marketing team at the Design and Crafts Council, the Design and Crafts, Crafts Council itself, um, and our audience today, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks.